So then we are back with more understandings from the Renewed Covenant, from the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes then from the original manuscripts of the Hebrews of old, from the prophets of Israel. And through those prophecies we can take our bearings for the future, so we can then be more acquainted with the times and the seasons. Then Shaliach Shaul, while he was then gathering his people and clustering in order for them to become more acquainted with the delegation of the responsibilities, we find then Shaliach Shaul explaining then the Torah, and most importantly, the completion of the spring feast. That's precisely what then the Messiah came to do. Speaking of Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, from the first verse through the 21st verse, that's where you find then the actual spring feast of the first tabernacle services. So then, the priests were then involved regarding the services they used to provide, and they were subdivided, in fact, in many areas where then each of those would be taking the time of the year to do the services of the tabernacles. The order of Levi was one of them. So you can read those in Chronicles. The way then the priests they used to rotate the services in the Holy Temple later on. But we are speaking most importantly at the time. So people then they get acquainted first with the basics. It's very important the repetitions of the basics first. Because we are coming from Gentile background and we are very unfamiliar with the times and the seasons spoken of by then Shaliak Shaul. So then it is very important the repetition of these steps so then we are acquainted with those times and seasons. It doesn't um, have much advantage for a person to hear the particulars of the first service without having at least the basics from Bereshit to Revelation. A quick line from those so then you can establish your bearings based upon the seasons. So then the Gentile mind begins to be then obviously educated in how to read the scripture. We already have then the understanding of the scriptures as not being a codex, neither a sewn together Torah as we know of these days. So the codex that we have is wrong, and then the Torah sewing it together is wrong. The Holy Hebrews of old, when they used to do the services either in a temple or then during the tabernacle service, they had those neatly put together in understanding of the prophetic and of the seasons. Extremely important. It is so important they trained for more than a thousand years for the coming of the Messiah. More than a thousand years. It is a long time. Our country has barely a couple hundred years old plus. They had the nation put together by that time and they trained for more than four times the age of our country. Each of those understanding the times and the seasons. So it gives you the utmost importance to have those areas then selected and then in practice understanding and then in quote navigating through those times and seasons with absolutely precision. Because we must understand the basics as then you understand mathematics. You know, you understand the multiplication and then division, those numbers. So you study then from the first until the tenth how to multiply. So then the multiplication of those numbers you have to know by memory. So the basics of understanding of reading the prophecies as per the time of the prophets and then later the Shlishim it is as if you would study the basics of mathematics. You can study algebra if you don't know how to do the basic of calculations. So Gentiles when they are discovered in this holy method, very popular during the time, then it takes time to, for them to get in quote the mathematics and the basics first in place, then later they understand the rest of the prophecies.
So then Shaliak Shaul gave us a whole lot more understandings from his time when he was giving us understanding of the 10th chapter of Hebrews. And then that we understand Hebrews, they are for the Hebrews. Isn't that profound? The Hebrews are for the Hebrews. Why? Because we are speaking of the transitional time from the first service and the second service. Truly the second service started as per design during the time of Yohanan. He was the first Shaliak living in a city representative of the city. That's why he had visions. He was protected on the mainland in a holy city receiving those holy visions from heaven in regard to the time of the end. So then, since he was a Shaliak, he was sensed. Sensed means understanding the many names of Yahweh. As you understand, Yahweh the Creator has many facets. In each of those facets, a significance on understanding the times and seasons. We don't have this, unfortunately. Gentiles that can study for the rest of their lives, those are not granted to Gentiles. Those are granted only to those living in a holy city or holy cities. Not only this, but then the many functions of Ruach HaKodesh only also given to the Hebraic people or those Gentiles invited to live in a holy city or the cities. Those take, obviously a person must speak fluently then the uh, holy language and then understand the facets of the Creator and then comes also the understanding of the functions. So each of the members of the camp, certain of them are designated to function either in the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, miracles, and then Tongue interpretation of tongues, discerning of spirit and prophecy. So these areas then, those people, they used to be very acquainted with those. And for quite some time, for nearly more than a couple hundred years, they were then exercising these in the holy cities. So as we begin to understand what Shaul meant then in the 10th chapter of Hebrews, you find... Shaul stating, For in the Torah there are shadows of the prophetic events to come. So then, why was he then speaking in this understanding regarding the Torah? Because he is giving us enlightenment of what we should understand of the Torah regarding the second services of the Holy Tabernacles. This is what he makes a reference of it. However, in order for us to understand, for us to understand this factor, we must understand the actual Torah. For in a Torah there are shadow prophetic events. If you have to understand the shadow prophetic events to come from the Torah, you have to know the Torah. That's when you start your quest of becoming then a messianic person. Or a believer. So then, based upon the holy teachings of the Messiah himself, we find him during the time of his ministry precisely 490 days. This is the first layer of Daniel the prophet. So the spring feast, precisely 490 days. This is the time that it had taken him to complete the entire spring feast. And have this in mind. The entire nation trained for more than a thousand years. Every year rehearsing. Holy Mikras. They rehearsed, 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 rehearsed. Until the Messiah came. So can you imagine your whole generation of people for more than a thousand years training every year those feasts. They would know precisely, extremely precisely what the Messiah should do. 
The Messiah would come and do this, 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 this. The Messiah would come do this, this, this. Because when you begin to study the Spring Feast, you understand the actions that the Messiah would do. They would identify him as the Messiah, bringing the first anointing for the second service. So then the Messiah himself, he completed, and we find him during the time he was in the temple. He was reading then Yerushiahu. But we understand then, in the prophetic, he was speaking of himself completing the spring feast. 61st chapter, we should make a reference of he speaking of himself during the spring feast. And Yahweh had sent him as the anointed, then he would enlighten those who were would those who were with lacking of understanding. It's what it means of not being rich when he speaks. He speaks of the Torah. So he came to enlighten those who were in dark. Those not having enough understanding of the instructions. So then he was given then Yerushiahu's Megillah. And there he was. He was reading precisely the time of the year in the spring. And then he was reading of himself. So he went from the season, the prophecy... The time, the layer of himself is speaking of from Yerushiahu. And he was then, his ministry was from 3259 to 3299. Pretty career's calendar. At the time he was speaking this prophecy, it was roughly 4031. Because he died then, of course, he was nailed to the pole on 4032 because he was then born in 3999 first day of the feast of the tabernacles because he tabernacled with us so it was the feast of tabernacles and the reason why they found his date because then they had the big star that was then positioned in heaven and this was a secular recording done at the time and then also the lunar eclipses. So then if you understand times and seasons, seasons, spring feast, autumn feast, you find eclipses, lunar eclipses. Then you match precisely with the computer when those eclipses were. Then you find the time of the year, then you understand what feast was and what time. And it was found that he was born in 3999, mid-Tishri, equivalent of our September, first day of the Feast of the Tabernacles. But first you find the date because of the season. They were taught by seasons. He would come in this season of the year because of the great star in heaven would show as per then the prophet. The prophet spoke of a season when the star would show up and then during this season he would tabernacle with us. That's why we have then the feast where then the tabernacle, feast of tabernacles. They trained for more than a thousand years. So then as per such the Messiah came. So as each person begins then they study this in a Hebraic understanding, those fluent prophecies they become familiar because we then in line our minds with the creator's mind so then understanding this viewpoint then Shaul the Shaliak he knew precisely what was going on because he was then taught the people from these times and seasons that's why sometimes he when speaking with the people he would say then in terms of the uh, times and seasons, he should not then be teaching the people because this should be the very basics of it. 
And during these days that so many people, they do not have this understanding of the times and seasons, then they must acquire the knowledge of it. So then when Shaul was speaking, he was considering the people listening to those areas that they would be acquainted with at least the spring feast and autumn feast found in the Torah. Because then when you hear the Shaliat speaking then regarding the Messiah was then founded upon the foundation of the prophets and then the Shilishim. Or then the foundation of the Torah. Later became the completion. So whosoever speaks of the Messiah must have the foundation. You find foundation in the Torah. But when Gentiles are learning, they don't learn the substance of themselves. As Shaul pointed out, if you begin to read, you find a section of it, where then later, on the 10th chapter, the first verse, you find it's not the substance of themselves. So the first verse of the 10th chapter, you find, For in Torah there are shadow of the prophetic events to come, but he states it's not the substance of the Torah. It's not speaking of then the action of doing the feast or then completing the feast. It is what they are signifying in the future concerning the second tabernacle services. And he was speaking these to the Levitical priests because the priests, they received then the updates. That's why you have Hebrews in your codex. But you don't understand anymore as codex. You understand as a pile of Megillus. If you begin to understand as a pile of Megillus, every time you read the scripture, you are going to find the season of the year. Then you are located at a time period of the year. What time period of the year is located in Leviticus, in the Torah? Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Is that spring feast or autumn feast? So then you begin to locate yourself with the Torah. After you are locating yourself with the Torah, you begin then to understand then the first service, second service, first service, second service, and then you begin to understand the scripture. And these were very popular during the time of the Messiah. These were the basics. So then he explains, these are not the substance of the feasts themselves, but what they are signifying, so then the people in the future would understand. In many other areas then we can find many of his explanations regarding then the um, Hebrew and the reason why you have the entire teaching these Megillas because the Hebrew writing Shaul the Shaliach wrote absolutely certain Shaliach Shaul wrote it. The reason why it's because he was the most knowledgeable student of the time of Gamaliel and the minimal requirement to study under his program was the student had to know the entire Torah by verbatim it. He had to speak from Bereshit until the end of the Hebrew Torah. Those were the basics, the instructions. You could study under his program only if you had this knowledge. As you begin to study the Hebrews, you begin to understand the depth of Shaliak Shaul. And he wrote it because he was given them the task of linking his people. So then when you begin to read you have multi-layers. So then you begin to understand as when you come to an area that he explaining of what the Messiah did and what the Torah demanded. What the Messiah did and what the Torah demanded. 
what the Mashiach did, what the Torah demanded. For each of the topic, you put in your mind a Megillah nicely rounded and placed in a corner. When you read another topic, it's another Megillah. You placed on the side. And then, when you find another topic, then you place on the side. Only with a tiny note on the corner so you understand the layers. The more you do this, the more you begin to understand the layering situation. And then you read on, and read on, and read on. Because when you are reading, then the renewed covenant, it is always a comparison. No part of it is by itself. You don't compare with yourself. You don't compare with anybody else. You don't play with those verses. You don't put those together on your own. You don't play with the verses. You don't play with the chapters. You don't invent stories with neither of them. And should you never take the time to explain those without the proper understanding of the Torah. Those, they have a specific guidelines that were given to each generation, year by year, year by year, in a certain way, so then no person would play with those when the Messiah came. So for each topic, study it, write them on a Megillah, close it, make a nice tube out of it, write this is a layer regarding then the Messiah completion of the Spring Feast. Then you find a topic and then you write on it. Then you go to the next comparison. Then you write very neatly and you write then the topic on it. It's another layer. Then you find another topic. Then you make another Megillah. So then when you begin to study, you position yourself what type of understanding this is related with the prophets of old. Then you have the second service, first service, second service, first service. Then you go further. What type of year was this or what season of the year was? Then you begin to make a distinction. This was then the spring feast, this was autumn. This was feast, spring feast, autumn feast, spring feast, autumn feast. So then when you begin to go through the centuries and finding out those areas, you begin to be versed. Then time is no longer the problem. You're not bound by time anymore. You begin to think as the Creator thinks. Because you are then begin to think in the Spirit. And there is no more boundary that limits your mind. Oh, what year is it? And then you begin to fold around. And they, oh, yeah, this was in 700 BCE. And then you find another topic. What is it has to do with then chapter? In, it's a waste of time. We must learn, we Gentiles must learn the Hebrew way of understanding the scriptures. Then it has to be very neatly done per Megillah. It is true, if you then begin to do every topic a Megillah, we're going to have a big pile of them. But then it helps you make a selection in your mind when the topic arises. Many people think, oh, the Mishra is coming back at any moment. And then you kind of have to kind of, you know, laugh it silently. And then at the same time, some people, oh, but nobody knows when he was born. Then you kind of have to laugh also, but can be very loud. Because it's ignorance. They don't understand the times and seasons. They were never taught. But as you begin to learn the times and the seasons, precisely you come to 39.99. Because of the big star in heaven, it was recorded secularly. 
That's your reference point. Then you find the time of the season of the Mishia, the completion of the spring feast, it was in the spring. Profound, isn't it? Then you position where it was at, so you know the date where the big star was observed. Then you have then the secular date on it. Then you have the understanding of the Mishia during the time of the year. Then you have another information, and then the lunar eclipse. So you can match the position. Then you have the senses of the time. That's another reference. And then as his ministry then during these 490 days became evident, then you find secular writings of the time and a certain date. Then because of the big star was recorded during the time of Daniel, they knew the time that came. When the computer was reading this information, there was only an option and an option only. It became 39.99 very nicely. They had to line up the entire information. And then obviously you have then in the uh, previous covenant during the Torah in the first day, then later you have another more dates. In the first day of king such and such of this year. So those the computer are reading it. Each of those times then making a reference of a season. Spring and autumn. Not only these, but then the months of the year. And then the computer reads it. Each of those with a lunar view coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. And the computer found 39.99, first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So we know when the Mishia was born. And we should because it was very important. Because the counting of the time of the first thousand years starts because he already born as a king. And in Hebraic culture it is extremely important knowing when a king is born. Counts a very special time regarding prophecy. So then he completed his spring feast when the time came and he ascended. Prior to his ascension, he said, then wait at the house of prayer until Ruach Kodesh would come and then they would be endowed to know what the next step. First came in then, tongues, interpretation of tongues. And then there was a transitional time. When the Mishia said then, go therefore and then around the world make holy cities. Because you were rescued from Egypt, you went to the holy city. Then from the example you were taught in the desert, then you go around the world form holy cities. Whatsoever Moses told you to do and observe, these do and observe. The only section of the Torah we don't do anymore is sacrificing animals or birds. Those are done away with. In terms of completion of, not replacement of, but completion of. And then the second service is then continued. And then in the tenth chapter of Hebrews you find yourself then speaking and then 10th chapter, 1st verse, for in the Torah there are shadow prophetic of the events to come. In order for you to understand the prophetic shadows, you have to understand first what the Torah means. So it was never abolished. 
However, the demands of the law for payment via animals because of sin, those were completed. We don't go through those rituals then for the forgiving of sins. We simply repent because of what the Messiah did for us. However, the continuation is a line that came from the Torah and never leaves the Torah. Torah means instruction, the basics. But then, we understand the shadows understanding of the Torah, not the substance of themselves. And that's what Shaul speaks. Because then, later on, he said, not the substance of the feasts themselves. He's not speaking of the actual feast. He's speaking the significance. Because there is a prophetic understanding of the time involved with those seasons. So then later when the people they tried to translate, they had so many Megillas, they did not have a clue what to do with those. Absolute not a clue. There you are, you have those strange writings on a paper and then they don't have any significance. And some of the Hebrews, they could read but they were not versed in understanding the layers and then the prophetic seasons. And more so when then Yohanan was in the first holy city then he had those Megillas perfectly placed, absolutely perfectly placed, as a person would then get a data from a computer. Because understanding in the spirit, a person that was sensed, the many names of Yahweh with a specific significance. So when he was reading the scripture, he was then having the presence of Elohim, he was sensed, and then he had a function. He knew the scripture as a computer. We don't have the ability of the senses because we don't speak the holy language. And we are not functioned. Only those living in the holy city or cities can have this. That's why the Torah is obeyed in its entirety. Except sacrifices. Sacrifices are no longer required. However, they maintain the feasts, the substance of the feast they must maintain. And also whatsoever is the significance of the shadows, because they have to teach the Gentiles. The Gentiles must be introduced to the uh, seasons of the years. Year after year, they mean every time comes the season they understand. In every season there is a special information that comes from heaven. So this was the excitement of the people of the holy cities because every time there was a special season there was a special word coming from heaven. So obviously they would be excited. They want to know what the Creator has in mind. What's the schedule? What's the, uh, the agenda? And we Gentiles, we didn't have any of it. So we have to be outside of the holy city waiting then for them to come out and then teaching the people. And they would be presented with problems and, and the such. But those are optional. If you think you are above the Torah, you are unteachable. You are not able to grasp the importance of the foundation Shall we spoke, the foundation of the prophets. Where do you find the foundation of the prophets? Torah, the instructions, the basics. But since then you are a Gentile, you don't study then only the substance of those feasts, you understand then the significance of them. But you have to know the Torah in order to understand the significance. So then, 
this entire time of talking, more than a half hour, these are then teachings from sharing viewpoints from of old that maintains you on the path of Yahweh. This is what it means. There are a whole lot more, many more to do because as we understand, the Gospels were given, those are only 10% of the entire teaching of a 490 days ministry of the Messiah. It's lacking 90, 90 percent. When you read Revelation, the Messiah already spoke those. The basics of Revelation, the Messiah explained. He did explain. has a whole lot more many information that we don't know of. The reason why it's because the Messiah was rejected. Try to understand Israel rejected the Messiah. And they began to persecute those who were after the Messiah. So obviously the people they had those Megillas, those writings, they were destroyed. Try to use your mind. The temple had guards over there. With a word from the high priest, they could execute a person. And since the anger towards the Messiah was so big, any person caught with writings of the Messiah was then destroyed. When you begin to read then the Gospels, you find concentrations, and sometimes they are spaced in a way that does not make sense because they were put together hastily. You don't find the spacing very nicely as then the prophets of old used to give then the prophecies. You find sometimes bunched up information put together in haste. 10%. But because then you understand times and seasons then you begin to explore what then the prophets were speaking. You study the Torah, then you study the prophets, then you study the writings, and then begin to understand what the prophets were saying, what the Messiah would do. And the prophets, when they speak, they speak the 100% of the spring feast. So then when you match up then Leviticus the 23rd chapter from the 1st until the 21st verse gives you this spring feast. Then you find those layers spoken of extras from the prophets. Until you find each of the prophets the layers related with the spring feast. Whatsoever you don't find in the renewed covenant the Messiah spoke but it was recorded but destroyed. So then you have to come up with that layer and then only include as part of the teachings of the Messiah because they had to complete, the prophets had to complete of what the Messiah would do. Nobody is inventing ideas on how to find those 90. You have to find out what the prophets told. And whatsoever you don't find the renewed covenant, you find what the prophets told that he would do. If what we have of the renewed covenant is not completed from the prophets, it's because he did do, and he did speak, and it simply was not recorded, because it was destroyed. Because whatsoever we have from the renewed covenant must be a hundred percent complete as per instructions in Leviticus. It is that's a must. There is no way out of it. Then whatsoever was done then regarding autumn feast, it's another hundred percent. The autumn feast you find revelation. Then any area, for instance, Ecclesiastes, King Shilimon, he had 
very understanding is from heaven himself. He spoke with Yahweh. And from the seventh to the ninth gives you part of then the second death. That's vengeance. He spoke of the vengeance. That's a layer that you placed aside. Then you have this Megillah of this layer and then you compare with Revelation. That's the Autumn Feast. So what is Revelation for us? It's extremely layered. You have to have the knowledge from Bereshit until the end of the Hebrew Torah. You have to have the basics of the knowledge then the writings, then the prophets, then the renewed covenant. Each of those per season of time, per prophecy, neatly put together as Yohanan did. Then you begin to read the revelation, you have to have a stack, huge stack of Megillahs, and you have to know how to read them each per season. Then you, when you go through the thick of it, you understand what they mean. The truly very exciting times because we Gentiles we were never taught like this. And we have this privilege. And every time we find a person that is from the Mishia, from the elect, believer in the Mishia, we always encourage them to cluster. Because then we as Gentiles we have done our part. We are studying the Torah, studying the prophets, studying the writings, the renewed covenant, revelation, studying as per Hebraic way of thinking, and we are encouraging those who are saved in the Messiah to cluster in front of the holy city. If we do this, our part is done. Then it's from the Messiah what he said, and the discipline that takes to make sure those people they cluster. That's what the Messiah told them to do. But we can take them by the hand because it requires the discipline of Yahweh to put those people back where they belong. But at least we Gentiles know where we stand at. We go up to this point. Then we report at the gate for further instructions of what we think is the problem. Then we present to them and we get an answer. That's the way it used to work. That's why Asia, for instance, is so prosperous these days. Because they used to visit at the gates very often. And they had problems. Problems in the government, problems with their own families. And they received answers. And at the end of time, interestingly enough, they are the very people leading the land, the entire lands of the world. Speaking of kingdoms, nations, and they are leading the market because of what Shaliak Shaul did. Please stay tuned, much more coming up.